All right, going to answer a question that I've seen that the foolish atheists will come out with. They come out with all these little special things, and then they feel that it justifies their uh, hatred of God and uh, their hatred of the Bible and their hatred of God's judgment on their sins, their sinful life. They're very wicked people. Uh, that's what I've always seen with atheists, and their, their primary sin is the sin of self-righteousness. They don't believe that they need a Savior. And so they'll come out with all these things, and one of their little attacks that they come out with is they'll say, um, children have to be educated to believe in God. Every, every child that's born is an atheist. <laughs> Funny. So I'm going to answer that in this video. But they're just going to give you a couple of scriptures here first, and, and you know, because this, this always makes the atheists go into little hissy fits. You know, whenever you pull out the sword of the Spirit, the King James Bible, they start to froth at the mouth, and, and, and you know, they go into convulsions, and the devils that are within them, or, or maybe they're just really truly idiots, they just go wild and, we don't believe the Bible, we don't believe the Bible. Yeah, yeah. Well, here you go again, okay? Sword of the Spirit coming out, get ready to get cut. Proverbs chapter 18. Proverbs is a good book of the Bible for attacking the atheistic uh, fools out there. Through desire a man, having separated himself, seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom. That's what atheists are. A fool, for what said in his heart, there is no God. A fool hath no delight in understanding, but that his heart may discover itself. They will not delight in true, logical, uh, you know, argumentation, only unless they can discover their own heart. And, the, and Jesus said that their heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. When the wicked cometh, then cometh also contempt, and with ignominy reproach. Okay, verse 6, jump down there. A fool's lips enter into contention, and his mouth calleth for strokes. <laughs> A fool's mouth is his destruction, and his lips are the snare of his soul. These people are going to send themselves to hell because they're continually, the atheists just feed off of one another. They just, oh, that's a good argument. I can use that against the Christians. Oh, you know, and they'll go back and forth. It's really kind of funny. But uh, another one. I mean, you know, you have, to, you have to weigh all this stuff out. I'm doing this video, but there are times that these fools just keep going. And uh, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 9 says, Speak not in the ears of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of thy words. And I realize that there are some fools out there, these atheists, that are not going to listen to the wisdom of my words, the wisdoms of these words here, the wisdom of these words, excuse me. Um, and I'm wasting my time. But uh, there are some that are that are not really atheists, they're agnostic. And those are the people, that's why I'm doing these videos. Because they've been hurt by organized religion, and now they're out and they're going, okay, they associate salvation, they associate Christianity with, I have to go to some church building someplace and be part of organized religion. And which one am I supposed to be part of? Don't be part of any. It's fake. There are no church buildings in the New Testament. Okay? Old Testament, yes, there was a temple there. But that system has been done away. Okay? You don't have to go to some building called a church. Those things are pagan structures. You were deceived into thinking that uh, God is somehow connected to that whole mess there, and He's not. Okay? So that's who I'm speaking to here. Those are the ones I care about. But let's, let me just show you this thing here. Okay? From the Bible. Again, you know, why are you so upset about a book? Some of these atheists, you know, ah, he's quoting the Bible again, he's quoting the Bible again. Yes, I'm a preacher, that's what I do. Don't be so scared about my book here. All right, I know it frightens you, you know. Oh, well, you probably just uh, wet yourself there, but, you know, stick with it. Pro or, excuse me, Matthew chapter 18. Let's see about this thing here of, people, you know, children are born atheists and they have to be educated into a belief of God. Let's see what Jesus Christ said about this. Jesus Christ, according to this King James Bible, was God manifest in the flesh. Let's look about his words here, and then let's consider some logical, logical argumentation. All right? I'll put my Bible down when we get to that part. Don't worry. Matthew chapter 18, verses 1 through 7. Actually, we'll go to verse 6. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. 
But whoso shall offend one of these little ones, which believe in me. Jesus said that little ones believe in him. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. You better be careful before you offend a child. And let me tell you something. No child in their right mind is going to be an atheist until they're brainwashed by some fool out there into believing the stupidity of evolution. Think about this, okay? I'm done with this for now. I'll put it down. You can rest here for a minute here, atheists, okay? Think about this. A child is born, comes out of the mother's womb. Here comes out the baby, the doctor takes the baby, the midwife, much better than the doctor, takes the baby, hands him to the baby, or hands the baby to the mother. The mother is breastfeeding the baby, much better than uh, bottle feeding, and actually helps to increase brain size. You know, bottle-fed babies are, you know, formulas, primarily sugar, and that's a whole other issue, but uh, maybe some of the atheists are bottle-fed, I don't know. But the uh, point is, we're talking science here too, by the way. Um, Breastfeeding is far better than bottle feeding. But that child now is there, okay? Brand new, fresh in the world. Now, scientifically, we can agree on that, can't we? Nobody's told the baby anything yet. Correct? Sure, absolutely. And that baby hasn't been born into a church building someplace. Okay, at least I wouldn't think so. They're born in a hospital or they're born at home with a midwife there. Now that baby looks up and there's mother and there's father. Right? And as that child grows up, even if the father wasn't there for the birth, they still understand, I had a mother, I had a father. Now let's look at this thing logically for a minute. Take that baby and say, here are two options for you to believe about the creation of the world. Number one, there, was a, there is a supernatural being that the Bible identifies as God, and he is your father. God is the father of man. Now the baby can look and, he can, and that baby, he or she can say, I have a father, I have a mother. Without a father, I wouldn't be here. Okay? Now let's go with the, this uh, atheistic evolution. Science, as they call it. Opposition of science falsely so called, as it's rightly identified in the Bible, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 20. But let's just go with this science of evolution. Okay? Atheism. Hey there, baby. If you go back far enough, you didn't have a father. There was a child at some point in time, there was life that came from non-life. Where did the non-life come from? Well, see, there was an explosion. We call it the Big Bang Theory. Well, we, it's called the Big Bang Fact because we're dealing scientifically here. We can somehow prove something that happened billions of years ago that we didn't see and that there's really, you know, we just have some, uh, you know, we, we have theories, but we'll call it fact because it's science. Um, but... You see, at one point in time, if you go back far enough, there was no father. You came from non-living matter. Now, um, logically speaking here, which one is more believable to a child? They can look, they can see their father. You say, well, there's a father in heaven that created everybody. Or they can look, they can see their father, and they say, if you go back far enough, there was no father. My great, 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 great ancestor came from nothing. Uh, no, I believe that uh, Jesus Christ was right. The little ones believe in him. They don't believe in evolution. You say, well, the science, you know, people didn't have science back then. Uh, okay, this, what you call science, if you actually look at it, it's just ancient pagan philosophy. The pagans that were always trying to get rid of God. And by the way, you go back way before, and I did a video on this, way before Jesus Christ even showed up on the earth, there was warnings saying, the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. They're corrupt. They're abominable. So atheism was around before Christianity. Acts chapter 11, verse 26 is where Christianity shows up. The disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. 
There were no Christians in the Old Testament, but there were atheists, people that didn't believe in God. So don't tell me, oh, atheism is a creation of modern science. No, it's not. No, it's not. So you need to quit this little stupid lie that all children are born atheists. That's retarded nonsense. And I'm being kind. All right? And if you're a Christian out there, what you're going to find is that these atheists, they will, they will, you know, they're truly Luciferians. Um, again, I have a video on that. They can, they believe that they can be gods, that they can define what is good and evil themselves. And what they'll do is they'll continually give you questions and questions and questions and questions. Why? Because they continue those questions in their own mind to stay away from having to realize, I'm going to have to answer before God someday. That's why they're doing it. That's why they come up with stupid nonsense like all children are atheists and they have to be educated into believing in religion. That's nonsense. Absolute total nonsense. And I'll grant you, you know, organized religion, it is a system that people have to be educated into. But organized religion is condemned in this book. Remember, Jesus Christ was killed not by atheists. He was killed by religious people. And Christians have been persecuted by religious people. You understand? And I know the atheist mind can't quite fathom all that, you know, that, that there are some religious people that are wrong and there are others that are right, you know, in terms of people that, are, that have true religion, the true relationship with Jesus Christ. But that's the reality of this world. And, and let me ask you a question there, atheists. When has Catholicism ever gone out and hunted you, you down as, as people and slaughtered you? They've done it to people like me. And they will in the future. Why? You see? You're not a threat to Roman Catholicism. Not at all. Why? Because they're Luciferians and you're a Luciferian. As an atheist. If you're agnostic, then I do pray that you would consider these things and that you would get a King James Bible. Read it. Read it. Realize that there are right divisions. There's proper divisions. You can look at the Old Testament. You can see how Jesus Christ brought in the New Testament. Compare the two. You see, the big problem that atheists have with this book is this book tells about man. This book tells that man has been a failure. God created man and said, there, you have a free will. I'm not going to force you to do anything. I'm going to provide a way of salvation. And if you reject it, well, I'm going to have to punish you. Is that so unreasonable? I mean, wouldn't it be a terrible thing if God in heaven never punished any of the wicked? You get a guy like Hitler and he goes and dies and the Lord says, Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Go on in. I mean, aren't there people that deserve to go to hell? You see? You can put your faith in Jesus Christ. I mean, read the Bible for yourself. You know in your heart that if you go back far enough, there's a father there. The only reason that you would believe otherwise is because you have had your mind warped. You have been brainwashed by the humanistic, atheistic, Luciferian agenda. And by the way, let me just give you another little thing here before I close this video. And that is that Roman Catholicism is taking over. Uh, the Trump administration, as well as a lot of other things, uh, they're filled with, ca with Catholics. And uh, if you think that you're going to be broad-minded and open-minded, and I'm just not going to join organized religion, let me tell you something. The average atheist that I've ever met doesn't have the guts or the character to stand up against true organized religion. And when the Catholics are coming around, the inquisitors, and they're saying, you will join Catholicism, you will come down to a local church, and you will take the mark, and you will worship the beast, you're not going to have the guts to stand against it. You think to yourself, you've been mind-controlled and brainwashed into thinking that the future is atheism. The future is not atheism. The future is radical, organized religion. It's being set up. I guarantee you it's being set up just like the Bible said was going to happen. And you can deny it and reject it and say, well, I reject God and come up with all your little questions and all your little attacks and all the dumb little things that you do. But uh, you're going to have to give up that fantasy eventually. 
So I do pray for the agnostics. Atheists are fools, whatever. Agnostics, uh, I understand why you'd be an agnostic if you were raised in this organized religion thing, going, being forced to go to church and all that stuff. That stuff's false. It's totally false. Check out what I'm saying. Watch some of my other videos. Get a King James Bible. Look up these things for yourself. Consider it. Look at the complexity of nature and then tell me that that happened by random chance. No, it didn't. And you know it. You know it. Please consider these things.